All right, hi everybody. My name is Logan, and today we're going to be making this simple animation in Blender. This one's kind of an abstract thing, just a little bit of movement, and it has some nice looping. So let's get started. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to start off by deleting everything in Blender except your camera. Set up your camera however you want, we'll worry about that later. We're going to do Shift A, and we're going to add a curve, and then we're going to go down here and we're going to add a rectangle. Make it a little bigger. The important thing is do not move the origin from the center. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to switch out of edit mode, and we're going to add a cube. We're going to go to this cube under modifiers, add modifier, add an array. Then we're going to add a modifier after the array, and we're going to add a curve. And then down here in the curve object, we're going to select the rectangle as the curve. Now we're going to bump this up until we get to 8. And we're going to size the cube until we get it so it closes all the way like that. And we have this shape, which is kind of interesting. We're going to go over here, and we're going to duplicate the array. Go to the second part down here, change it to 3, put the factor of x to 0, the factor of z to 1. Now we got this. We're actually going to bump it up to about 5. I think that looks a little better. Alright, then after that, we're going to add a wireframe. Go down here and uncheck replace original. And we're going to change this material offset to 1, so we change the materials to be able to see it. I'm just going to turn this up right now just so we can see that. Now that we got this, we're going to go down here to our animation. We're going to be doing a 24 frame per second animation, and so we're going to set this to 240. Once you get it set to 240, go to the first frame, and we're going to hit I on the rectangle, not the cube, the rectangle, and we're going to insert location, rotation, and scale. We're going to go all the way to the end over one more, so we're going to go to frame 241, click back on the rectangle, go over here to the properties, and then rotation, we're going to set each one of these rotations to 360. And right click and insert keyframes. Now if we play it, we already have this thing going on, which is kind of cool. Alright, now that we have that, I'm going to hit shift A, go over, down to empty, and add a plane access. Hit 1 to switch to orthographic front view, G, X, and we're going to move this plane access over until it's in the center of these two and towards the bottom. Go back to the cube, go back to modifiers, and we're going to add a mirror modifier. Scroll all the way down on the mirror object, we're going to change it to empty. And we're going to have it on the X and the z-axis. And then we're going to take this empty and we're just going to move it on the x-axis until we get it where we want it. Now if we play it, you can see there's some nice mirroring, pretty cool looking effect. All right. Now we're going to hide both of the rectangle and the cube just for now. Hit shift A, add a curve, and we're going to add a circle. Make the circle bigger. Shift A, add a mesh, and we're going to add an icosphere. We're going to set the subdivisions to 4, just so it's smooth. Right click, shade smooth. Size this down a little bit. All right, now that we're on the icosphere, we're going to add a modifier of an array. And then we're going to add a modifier of a curve. We're effectively doing the same thing, but instead of a rectangle, we're selecting the circle. And we're going to change the x factor to 2, so there's a little bit of spacing, and just turn this up until we get it where we want it. Hit 7 to go to top view, and we're going to size this until we get it pretty evenly laid out. Perfect. We're going to duplicate this, go down here on the array, change it to 0 on the X, and put it to about 2 on the Y. Or on the, not the Y, the Z. We're actually going to turn this down until they're touching, so right now it's at like pretty much 0.8ish. Now we're going to do the same thing with the circle that we did with the cube. Go to the first frame, I, insert location, rotation, and scale. Go to the end frame, 
But instead of putting these at 360, we're going to set them at negative 360 so that it spins the opposite way. Right click and insert keyframes. Now if we play it, you can see we're getting the same sort of effect as we were getting with the other one. Now we're also going to go back to this Echosphere. And we're going to apply a mirror, scroll down, change it to the empty, and put it on the Z. Now if we put the cubes back in, you can see if we play it, we get this effect now. It's running a little bit slower just because of all the mirroring and everything. Perfect. Alright, now we're going to go into our camera. You can see how it's not centered. If we want it to be centered, we can go to the empty, go to the location, and see the X location. We're going to copy this, and we're going to go to the camera. We're going to go to the X location, and we're going to paste it. Now we have it right in the center. And if we switch to rendered view, we're just going to turn off the scene light and scene world for a second just so we can see better. Perfect. Now it's right in the center. Now we're going to go to the camera. Down here, change the type to panoramic. Crank the lens all the way up, put the field of view to 360. Now down here on the Z, we're just going to set the Z on the camera to zero, so it's perfectly centered. And now if you see when we're playing it, we get this nice fish eye effect. Everything looks nice and perfect. Cool. So now that we have this laid out, what we're going to do for the shading is we're going to use something called Blender Kit. I will put a link to their description, or I put a link in the description to their website. Effectively, it is just a plugin that allows you to search for materials, objects, and HDRIs. All you have to do is download it, and then once you have the zip downloaded, you go Edit, Preferences. You're going to go down here to your add-ons, Install choose wherever you installed it, and then all you have to do is log in to have it work. You can make a free account on their website and get access to a bunch of stuff. So we're going to select the cube, we're going to go to the second one over here, which is the materials, open it up so we can see it, and we're just going to search for a rainbow. Once it loads, we're going to click on the second one, the transparent glossy plastic. I really like the way this one looks. Perfect. And we're going to do this on both the cube and the Icosphere. Now I have them set. The animation's looking pretty nice so far. The only thing we still have left to do is switch back on the normal lighting, go up here into shading, switch from object to world, shift A, add an environment texture, point this into the surface, Choose whatever HDR you want. Um, you can use this menu up here to search for HDRIs. Let's just do that. Let's do a studio. Search studio. Choose one you like. Kind of like this one. Click on it. Choose what size. We're going to do the 2K size. Hit OK. It'll download and it'll put it on there. Now if we switch to camera view, hide this, and go up to rendered view up here, we will see we have the HDRI. If you don't want to see it, what you do is you go over here to the camera, go down to film, and check off transparent. Perfect. Now this animation is effectively done. You can mess around with any more automation, any um, keyframing, camera movement, whatever you want to do. You can move the camera in or out, but this is effectively the animation we were going for. Sometimes in the rendered view, the light will get all weird, but don't worry about that. It's on there. You just have to let it cycle through a couple times and or turn it off and back on. And the light should be back. It'll be there in the final render. So how we're going to render this out is we're going to make a new folder on my desktop. We're just going to call this Tutorial 3. Don't mind my spelling. I'm an artist, not a writer. Go over here to Output Properties. From the Output, we're going to click the folder. We're going to go to the desktop. Choose Tutorial 3. Hit Accept. And I like to render this stuff as a PNG sequence, just so that way you can, uh, in case it crashes, you don't lose everything. So down here on PNG, but if you want, you can set it to FM mode. We're just going to leave it as PNG. 
This might take a while to render. I'm just going to set it to 10 seconds just so we can get a feeling. Obviously, the more time you give it, the better it's going to look. After you have that set, switch back to view mode, render, and then render animation. We'll let it render a couple frames, and then I will jump to compiling the frames into the animation. Perfect. If you look in the folder, it's starting to render every frame separately, and then we're just going to compile those frames. Once it's done rendering, I will be back and I will show you how to compile this in Blender. Alright, we're back. Everything has been rendered, all 240 frames. So now that we have the frames rendered, I'm going to open up a new thing in Blender. Delete everything, go over here in the upper left hand corner and change it from 3D viewport to video sequencer. Go add image sequence, navigate to where you had it saved as. I had it on my desktop. A to select all of them and add image strip. Change the length to 240 because that's what we had it set as. Go over here into the render settings, check off render region and crop to render region if you have them selected. Down here on the output, save it where you want to save it. We're just going to save it to desktop as tutorial 3. Hit accept. Down here, change it from PNG to FFmpeg video. Open up the encoding, change it to MPEG 4. Down here in output quality, I like perceptually lossless. You can put it at lossless or however you want, depending on how long you want to wait. And then once you have that set, you just go up here, render, render animation, and it will compile all your frames into a fluid animation. And this shouldn't take that long because everything's already rendered. All it is doing is just laying them on top of each other. As you can see, it is an alpha right now, so there's no background. If you want it to have a black background, throw it into a video editor and add a black background behind it but i kind of prefer the alpha if you upload it onto social media it will provide its own alpha i mean it'll get rid of the alpha and provide its own black channel for you perfect here we go tutorial three open this up as you guys can see if i can get this onto the right screen maybe i can't there we go it is a perfect loop if you play it looks really good. As you can see the quality is a little lower that's because I had it set to 10 second rendering frames but if you leave it up it'll look a lot better it'll just take longer for a frame to render. Perfect well hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial I will be looking for feedback in the comments uh, like subscribe follow my Instagram all that jazz and uh, I guess make some fucking art.